Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Jake Ludington here, and the other day I did a video on unboxing the Nook Color, and at the time I said that I didn't really buy the Nook Color in order to be an ebook reader. I mean, sure, it'll still work as that, but really what I wanted was an Android tablet that was small enough to fit in my cargo pants pocket. I have an iPad, I love the iPad, but I want something that if I don't really want to carry a bag or a lot of stuff in my hands that I can just slip this in the, the pocket in the side of my pants and walk away and, ha and still have something bigger than my phone as a screen that I can take with me. And while the Nook does have Android installed on it out of the box, Barnes & Noble has effectively hobbled the Android experience because they don't let you install all of the apps that you might want. Um, for instance, uh, I really like an app called Read It Later that allows me to bookmark things that, and, and store them and, and read them anywhere else. And uh, that's not available in the Nook store. The Kindle software, of course, is not available in the Nook store because it's in direct competition with the Nook ebook readers. But I have Kindle software installed everywhere. It's on my Android phone, it's on my wife's iPhone, it's on all the computers in my house. Um, and it is, of course, also on my Kindle reader. So I don't really need another reader and have to repurchase all the books because for whatever reason, people seem to think that formats are a great way to compete. I disagree. And so I'm going to root the device, put Kindle on there, put Read It Later, uh, put whatever other software I happen to put on there. But the big thing is I really wanted a screen that fits in my pocket that I can take with me that's bigger than my phone. So here I'm going to show you how to root the Nook Color. Some of the stuff is a little geeky, so probably there's going to be a lot of supporting materials in a blog post on LockerGnome.com that's going to go along with this. But I'll give you the basics so that you can step through it. And it requires a micro SD card with some software that you're going to have to install in a bootable format on that micro SD card. And you are potentially running the risk of uh, causing your, your Nook not to work, at least temporarily. The, the other thing that I really like about the Nook, and I, I experimented with this a little bit, is you can easily get back to the factory software installation of the Nook after you root it. So you might lose some data in the process. So I mean, if you, if you do go the route of rooting and decide to go back, you may want to back up that data. But I mean, it's a good idea to back up your data no matter what you're doing. The Nook has this great feature of if you hold down the power button and the, the home button, which is the little N, and like I think it's eight times, it forces the thing to reset itself so that it will function in unrooted format again. So that's really kind of a nice feature. Uh, there's, a, there's another way to actually physically wipe the data from the drive, but that doesn't get you back to the uh, working functional original Nook install. This, uh, this reset feature does. So um, rooting doesn't really hurt it. Um, and I'll walk you through the steps required, um, the software you need to install, and show you uh, what that process looks like here in the next part of this video. So I configured my micro SD card with clockwork and the manual neuter, which sounds really creepy actually when you say it out loud. But anyway, it's what's going to root the Nook so that I can actually use the full features of the Android experience as opposed to the Android experience that Barnes & Noble decided they wanted me to use. So first thing you gotta do is after you insert the SD card, you are gonna power on the device. And it's gonna show the uh, skull and crossbones loading. And then it should come up to like a like Linux type prompt. And then to navigate the menu, you use the volume buttons, the up and down, which are in this video are, are located here and here. And you're going to install zip from SD card. And then use the Nook Home button to select that. Then choose zip from SD card. And then manual neuter is the only zip I have on this disk. And that's what I'm going to choose. You guys scroll through all these no's, choose yes. And at this point, there's no turning back. Uh, once you do this, you will have to do the full restore of your Nook if, if this doesn't work.
which really the you can see that it's going through the process now it goes fairly quickly i've done this a couple times and the thing to keep in mind is you can't really break your nook by doing this um there's a sort of a convoluted process of you have to like force your uh, nook to not boot eight times in a row and then it will restore itself and then you can be back to the way it was before you did all your configurations you're going to lose your data when you do this but the device will still function so it's not like you end up with an unusable device it says it's complete so i'm going to pop out the sd card so i just popped it out i didn't take it all the way out but uh you can hit the power button to go back and then the nook home button to reboot the system and with any luck i'll actually have uh, honeycomb running on the nook that read forever sign comes up no matter what you do so it's not even really obvious that you changed anything at that point in the process And we got past the end screen. And as you can see, it's coming up with Nook Color. Uh, this is definitely not the interface that you would normally see on a Nook. See the little Android guy down in the corner? Right here. My biggest complaint about the Nook, I, I got this to be a $250 tablet, and I am convinced that it is the best $250 Android tablet that you can get at the moment in the 7-inch form factor. Uh, but, man, is this thing slow to load, no matter what you're doing. Once you, if you leave it on, you're fine, but the, the initial boot, slowest tablet I have ever used. I think my old Palm Pilot was faster. There we go, it comes up, and it's even uh, within a minute of the time that my my desktop machine says. Um, still got the, the Nook color background. I'm going to rotate this to open it. Um, and the thing that you want to do at this stage of the process, you can see there are three choices there. Complete action using Home, Soft Keys, or Zeme Launcher. You want to use the Zeme Launcher. And you can see some things that are different already about the Nook is you've got the Gmail, you've got Google Talk, you've got a web browser, and you've got music down here. Those are not things that were showing up in the uh, standard Barnes & Noble install of the Nook. Uh, the one thing that you need to do is you got to open up the Android market. There we go. Um, I think that didn't quite have it on the screen in the right place there, but the, the market is right there. You have to add your account. Um, I'm not going to add my account on screen because I really don't want everybody to know what my uh, Google market account is, but step through the process. It's the same process on any Android device. Click next, um, sign in. Cause I have a Google account. There we go. Um, the screen wasn't rotating on the sign in screen, but, uh, I can sign in now. So I put in my username and password. Um, and I'm probably going to do a cut to edit that out of the video. There you can see the Android Marketplace is on my Nook. I'm going to uh, search for... So one of the things that I am definitely going to install on here is Amazon's Kindle app because I have hundreds of books that I have downloaded from Amazon that I use on my Android phone, on a Kindle that I have at home, on my desktop, on my Mac, um, pretty much everywhere. So that's one thing I'll download. Um, one thing I noticed in the Nook store as I was looking through what apps were available. Um, I really like the app Read It Later. I couldn't get that. Um, 
I want to download some alternative browsers to the built-in Android browser, and those didn't seem to be available through the Nook. So I, I, this way I can actually get all the apps that I would want to use. But you can see I now have um, a device that is, for all intents and purposes, an Android tablet, but it still functions as a Nook. Uh, 